Hello and welcome to uh, the world forecast <coughs> uh, according to the New World Order. So what I'm going to introduce you to here is the Club of Rome, the internationalist think tank. It's been working for 50 years or so on the predicament of mankind. This was their first publication, The Limits to Growth. I'm going to just quickly, I, you can find this book on archive.org. You can download it. I'm just going to introduce you quickly to the, I'm just going to give you the gist, okay? Make it as simple as possible. It's a good book, you know. Honestly, I, I didn't read all of it. I uh, just quickly went through it to garner the, uh, the essence, right? This is the world model, standard run. All right. So according to their research, we have dwindling resources as this is peak oil primarily, right? But fossil fuels in general, especially peak oil, though. Resources are dwindling as this happens. Population is going to boom. Food production is going to crash. Um, and we're expecting a huge, basically a world civilization ending collapse as peak oil and energy resources run out. Now, this is really scary, right? And this is also, this is where the global reset comes into play. This is, this is what the global reset is about. The global reset, we're probably around right here or so, I don't know, in this area. Maybe X marks the spot for the Great Reset. The Great Reset is supposed to be a globalist plan to... Um, these are all different models based on different... different models based on different inputs. But what they're trying to do is turn the inevitable crash... Uh, here we are. The state of global equilibrium. This is their, oh, and they have a nice Aristotle quote. Yes, they quote Aristotle. World model with stabilized population. You can ignore that. There's not going to be any stabilized population anytime soon. I'm looking for their goal. Ah, yes. Model with stabilized population and capital. That's important. Of course, it's also fantasy because world population is not going to stabilize like this unless something really bad happens, right? Stabilized world model one. All right, so here we are. This is what <coughs> the the Great Reset is trying to do. It's trying to um, reduce inputs and positive feedback loops to create a taper, right, to taper off the resources so, so that we don't have such a monstrous natural crash, crash. You see the difference between this model and the one up there, the standard world model without the Great Reset. They want all the uh, lines to... Ah, oh, here we are. World model with stabilizing policies. You see, it's, it's not such a terrible crash 
with the uh, Global Reset Policies instituted. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to prevent a uh, Mad Max 2 scenario. We're going to have Mad Max 1. I think they're trying to prevent Mad Max 2. Now, we also have this book, The First Global Revolution. This is a good book. You can also get this on archive.com or .org. Um, I read this before. I'll read it again. Let me show you something else. Uh, 2052. All right, so this was published in 2012. <coughs> uh, the growth, the, the limits of growth, this book was published in 72, I believe. So this publication is a 40 year, it, it was published 40 years later, right? And it's talking about its expectations. The five big issues, the end of uncontrolled capitalism, economic growth, the end of slow democracy, really just the end of democracy, period. And we see this happening now with the United States, Britain. Um, they're just killing it. Uh, why? Because they need a more um, authoritarian mode of government to manage the, the taper controlled taper into our post fossil fuel era it's going to be intergenerational conflict climate now they talk a lot about climate but that's that's uh, bullshit it's not about the climate it's about the resources I mean the climate's important of course but I don't think that's the primary problem um, so they've got some forecasts here. Global population will stagnate earlier than expected because fertility will fall dramatically in an increasingly urbanized population. Maybe those uh, vaccines will um, help with that. Global population will be increasingly urban. Now, this is important. Part of UN Agenda 21, the Great Reset, in the United States at least, they're going to collapse the country. And if you want to be fed, you're going to have to come into the urban centers, which is crappy because the uh, <coughs> cultural presence in the urban centers are undesirable. I don't know how they're going to manage that. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see if they are going to make hard decisions. Hmm. The most surprising loser will be the current global economic elite. Mm. Now this is the Club of Rome saying this. Um, I'm not entirely certain what that means and I don't necessarily believe it. China will be the winner. All right, so this Club of Rome is very pro-EU and pro-CCP. Why? Not necessarily because they're Wha what would be the best word? Not because they're both the same New World Order, but because they're both cooperating in light of peak oil and this inevitable crash that we're expecting.
we'll skip some of these details. You can read this on your own if you want. Overshoot and collapse. This is the standard model without uh, global elite interference. What we should do. Ah, yes, here we go. Personal, personal advice. These are really good to read. You know, at one point it says to move. Move to a country that is capable of decision making. Democracy and the free market have solved a number of complex problems in past generations. But society will be facing problems not easily solved by these well-tested means. Notably, global warming. And again, it's... Global warming is the code word for fossil fuel collapse. Choose as your new homeland a country that is capable of acting proactively in the decades ahead. Learn Mandarin Chinese. All right, so they're putting China up as being the world leader. And I'd like to think not in terms of military imperialism or economic rape that's characterized the United States and its hegemony, but probably more like a beacon of light. Right? China will be the beacon of light for the world ahead. At least that's the optimistic point of view. <coughs> Global energy use peaks around 220, around 2040. Best in things are not sensitive to social unrest. Right, so they're they're expecting a lot of social unrest. Okay. Um, because they're collapsing everything. The the virus is obviously engineered to cater to this transition. I mean, if you, th I mean, obviously the lockdowns are a gross exaggeration. They don't make any sense in respect to the virus. It's not about the virus. The lockdowns aren't about that. They're about the peak oil crisis, all right? They are really serious and they're doing it they're doing it uh, one thing noted let me show you something really cool if you don't read this wild cards where are the wild cards wild cards some wild cards a financial meltdown yeah, that's coming. It's coming. They're going to kill uh, the, the current paradigm. All right. Uh, one thing to note, the, the Keynesian modern monetary theory system that they have now, it depends on perpetual growth for sustainability. Without perpetual growth, the financial system as it is will collapse. But as we're looking into the future, there is no more room for perpetual growth. So Keynesian and modern monetary theory economics are coming to an end, which means the system's going to collapse. The economic systems are going to transition into another one. and. I, I think this is very promising for gold because gold is stable. It's, um, it, it's economic stability. There's still room for growth and change, but we won't be over-investing in exchange for greater production. 
is gold. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, nuclear war. I think they're going to try and avoid that. But maybe not. A deadly disease killing two billion people. That's an interesting... That's an interesting forecast. Two billion. Well, if they were hoping COVID might do that, I think uh, they fell short of the mark a little bit. But then again, COVID's looking to be maybe something of a forever virus. Yeah, forever virus. Because look, <coughs> the rate at which it expands is so great, it's going to mutate quite a lot. And it might continue to mutate into things that, I mean, we'll have to have new vaccinations every year to counter the new mutations. <coughs> and it'll just survive into in, in perpetuity. So maybe, I, what is it, uh, 700,000 dead so far? But if it's a forever virus, it might just hit that 2 billion mark. <coughs> this is um, a very important reason why we need to uh, grow our own food, particularly high vitamin C content foods, strawberries, for example. I'm going to start growing strawberries for my family. People really don't seem to understand how important nutrition is. We're going to see a lot less nutrition. It's going to be really expensive. Here in China, vitamin C is expensive. It's really expensive. And um, as things get worse, either you're going to pay out the nose for vitamin C or you're going to grow it. You're going to grow it if you're lucky, if you're smart. <coughs> I mentioned counter-revolution in China. This one, I mean, this one, a nuclear war. I mean, they're putting them in as wild cards, but... Hopefully, they're crossing them off the list, right? I, I hope that they're crossing it off the list. I think that these two items are highly undesirable for their plant outcomes. And look at this. A citizen's rebellion in the U.S. that fundamentally changes the tax laws. <laughs> It's not going to be just the tax laws. It's going to be the democracy and everything. They're going to, I mean, if you look at the United States and its consumption, its energy consumption, and they're going to crash it. There is no more room for the United States in their future. Um, you, know, you know, if you don't understand the Great Reset or where the world is going, obviously you need to look at the New World Order and its think tanks. The Pope and Rothschild and, I mean, the who's who, the UN, this is all what it's about. And you can... I mean, you can read it. You can find their plans. I mean, these, granted, these are all public publications. Of course, the private side is going to be much more Machiavellian. All right? It's going to be very Machiavellian privately. This is what we can see publicly. Um, they're going to make a lot of hard decisions privately. For example, letting loose the virus, right? That's not going to be publicly admitted to, right? The great
great culling of humanity. Um, uh, 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 is there anything else I want to say? No. Yeah, just um, take a look at this book here. The Limits of Growth. This is the key to understanding the roots for the Great Reset. Remember, if you live in the United States, get out. If you think you're gonna, if you think you're gonna survive out in the rural areas, you should be a hundred and fifty percent, two hundred percent self-sustainable. Because unless you can feed yourself well, you're gonna be driven to the urban centers. I, I would I would recommend if if you're expecting to survive in the United States, the social unrest, the famine that's coming, it's gonna be so terrible. They're gonna be raiders, pillaging. It's gonna be a lot like Mad Max One, um, except worse. I I would recommend years worth of food and growing your food um, and survive the initial you know the initial five years or so before you're forced to drag your family back to the new world order to the urban centers I'd, I'd be really worried about the raiders out in the country They're going to clear out the rural areas, okay? And totally clear them out. And they say so in, in the UN, the Club of Rome here. They are reforming civilization on every fundamental level. And if you want to wonder why, because they are trying to avoid the greater cataclysm the peak oil apocalypse, which would be 10 times worse and maybe permanent, okay? All right, well, this isn't very professional, but I, I think I think should give you some good leads, some basic understanding, and, um, you know, good luck. Good luck. <laughs>